Before I start this video, I'd like to make it perfectly clear that I'm not going to be considering the relative audio performances of these two devices. If that's what you're looking for, this is not the video for you. The two devices I'm going to look at today are the BSS Audio AR133 DI box. I bought one of these a couple of years back now and been very happy with it. Looking at the inside of it, the circuitry seems to be very, very traditional. I was interested to find that Toman, the German music distributors who have their own brand name, Millennium, strangely spelt Millennium, offer a DI box that looks surprisingly similar to the BSS device. It's called the DI33, and it seems to provide most of the functions of the BSS device. So let's look at the external appearance of the BSS Audio AR133. We can see it's got a strange uh, curved design, which is supposed to allow cables to be run underneath it. Uh, it's protected by some very substantial rubber feet, uh, left and right, that run the entire depth of the unit. Inputs go through the front panel, and it's got an unbalanced quarter-inch jack socket, a direct feed through to the link socket, so you can daisy-chain this from your guitar through into your amplifier. There's also an unbalanced jack socket. I can't see many people using that, but there may be somebody who's got an unbalanced stage microphone that they want to connect to a balanced system. That and the input are just straight in parallel. And then we see the input attenuation switch, and this is an interesting thing. It's got 0 dB, 20 dB, and 40 dB pad settings. 20 dB is a 10 to 1 voltage reduction and 40 dB is a 100 to 1 voltage reduction. Now, I think most people would tend to use this at 0 dB for guitars, maybe 20 dB for a really high level output from a keyboard, but 40 dB, mm, I think that's intended to go straight off a loudspeaker from a power amplifier. I don't think many people would do that in practice, but the facilities there if needed. Turning to the back of the unit, uh, we've got a power on off switch there and a ground lift switch or an earth lift switch. When that's in the earth position, the ground or screen contact of the unbalanced input is connected directly to the earth pin, pin one of the output XLR. When it's lifted, that connection is severed and therefore leaving the input and the output of the unit galvanically isolated. Typically, if you're using this to intercept the signal from a guitar on the way to its amplifier, you're probably going to use the earth lift to avoid hum loops in the system. So the main output from this is a 3-pin XLR connector. Also, this unit can be run on a 9-volt battery, which will kick in if phantom power fails. It's the fact that you've got a battery that means you need the power on-off switch, otherwise it will discharge when you're not using it. Now let's have a look at the Millennium DI33 Active DI box. Its enclosure is curved in the same way that the uh, BSS unit was. It's about half an inch or 12 millimeters deeper front to back than the AR133. In this design, the manufacturers have chosen to use four separate short rubber feet instead of the full length feet on the AR133. Now I'm going to disassemble the two units and we'll see what the difference is between them in more detail. The Millennium unit uses M4 machine screws. In both units, the main body is an aluminium extrusion. Uh, with the Millennium DI box, each of the rubber feet has two screws, and these are M4 machine screws that go into tapped or threaded holes in the ends of the aluminium extrusion. And they serve not only to keep the feet on, but to, to clamp together the front panels and the back panels and the main extruded body. The AR133's approach slightly different. That has, again, two screws uh, at each end of the rubber feet. But when you take those off, you find that there is a separate uh, screw either side of the front panel and the back panel to hold that panel on. And all these screws are self-tappers. So they're going into a non-threaded hole. Interestingly, the cutout in the BSS rubber feet, which is provided so that it will slip over that additional securing screw, 
also appears in the Millennium design, although, of course, there are no additional securing screws for it to clear. Very odd. So now we have to slide out the circuit board from the extrusion, which means we've got to take off one of the end panels, and it's easier to take off the rear panel. So you've got just two self-tapping screws that go into the uh, male XLR connector at the back. Take the back plate off and just slide the circuit board forwards. Don't need to take the front panel off at all. So let's look at the circuit boards. Again, they're remarkably similar. They seem to have the same sort of components on board, although slightly different uh, organisation. The first thing we notice is that all the components are not surface mount. They're all leaded designs. So this is obviously a design that goes back many years. We'll just look at the connectors first. The AR133 uses Neutric, or Neutric, however you want to pronounce it, connectors for both the XLR and the jack connectors. So they're obviously pretty high quality components. The XLR connectors appear to have gold flashed contacts on them. Whereas the Millennium unit has unbranded connectors in all positions. The battery compartment's held on by a single screw in both cases. The one in the AR133 has got a large knurled screw head with a very wide slot in it that you could uh, operate with a, the edge of a coin or a key if you didn't have a screwdriver. The Millennium device uh, just has a smaller knurled screw head, just tighten it up by hand. Also, the screw in the AR133 is captive, whereas the one in the Millennium unit is not, so that will just disappear as soon as you undo it. Interesting that the battery compartment lid on the Millennium uh, unit actually has a countersunk hole where the screw goes through. Uh, maybe this means that you could replace it with a conventional countersunk screw to prevent people getting access to it in operation. To achieve galvanic isolation and provide power to the preamp stage, a relatively high frequency inverter circuit is used and has a little transformer to provide the appropriate voltage for the front end circuit, it's about 12 volts I think. The designers of the AR133 decided to use a 555 timer for this particular duty and that's again a venerable device much loved of hobbyists <laughs> over the years. But again, surprised to see it also being adopted by the Millennium unit, which is a much more recent design, I would have thought. The main audio device in this unit is a dual op-amp. The AR133 uses a uh, 33178 dual op-amp, whereas the Millennium unit adopts a TL072. And then there are a few discrete transistors dotted around the AR133 uses a BC546 and the Millennium unit uses a 2N551. And to provide a galvanically isolated balanced feed to the output of each of these units they use an audio transformer. The transformer in the BSS device uh, has a certain identification label on it which you can see here. The Millennium one is just a tin box with no markings on it whatsoever, so who knows what's inside that. There are no markings on the inverter transformers in either of these designs. They look slightly different and the big M on the BSS device is probably just part of a bit of 3M tape that's been used to wrap the windings. Which brings us to the major difference between the two devices and that is that one has uh, three stages of attenuation, as I mentioned earlier, 0, minus 20, and minus 40 dBs, whereas the Millennium unit only has two positions, that is 0 and minus 20. I think in practice this will be perfectly adequate, and it certainly makes the switching simpler, whereas in the Millennium design, switching in a 20 d pad is pretty straightforward and just uses a, a regular two-pole changeover switch. In the BSS design, yes, it's still a two-pole changeover switch, but it has a particularly odd connection and disconnection sequence, which probably makes it quite an expensive variant of these miniature switches. Now, the input to the buffer amplifier 
is nominally a uh, one meg impedance, which sounds good, and indeed that's what will be presented when the units are set to zero dB. However, when you go into the attenuated position, the resistor divider network used tends to present a lower resistance uh, or impedance. So with a Millennium design, going to a 20 dB attenuation would drop the input impedance to somewhere around 47K, which may be a little low for some electric guitars. In the BSS design, it's very similar. At 0 dB, it's about 1 meg input impedance, but at the 20 and 40 dB pad settings, in each case, the impedance will also drop to about 47K. Another difference between the two units is the position of the power indicator. On the BSS unit, the red LED is visible only from the rear of the unit, whereas in the case of the Millennium DI box, the indicator lamp is on the front of the unit. And on a final note, it's important that the DI box chassis is actually connected to the earth of the circuit board. And to that end, each of these designs has a sprung contact which sticks out from the board and scrapes on the inside of the extrusion as you insert it. The one on the BSS unit seems somewhat more flimsy and on a thin piece of spring metal. So some conclusions then. We've got uh, two units competing for one's custom. One four times the price of the other. I'd probably say that due to the law of diminishing returns for twice the quality you probably pay you four times the price. And I think that's probably the case here, actually. As far as I can tell, the Millennium unit does the job quite well. I've been playing with that for the last few days since I received it. And obviously, I've been very happy with the BSS DI box, which, as I say, I've had for um, two or three years now. I certainly feel the construction quality in the BSS is better. The soldering seems more consistent. And I do obviously like their choice of name brand connectors it gives a little more confidence so i would personally think that for light duty and if we're not too bothered about uh, reliability then the millennium one seems like excellent value for money you get an awful lot of functionality for 27 pounds but i think if i had a lot of critical work to do it's probably worth spending the extra to get the bss unit uh, and also you have the additional uh, attenuation setting which might come in useful at a pinch and don't forget that there are many many other active di boxes out there so your choice is very very wide i just thought i'd compare these two because they look so similar anyway that's it thank you for watching and uh, best of luck with your own choice of di box